Hello, my name is Tom McDermott, N5EG. In this video, we'll go over getting started with KA9Q radio, and we'll focus on verifying the setup. We'll run a couple of simple tests, and we'll use a server computer, which can be a Raspberry Pi 4, or another Linux computer. In this particular case, I'm using a uh, uh, Intel Core i5 computer for the server. And plugged into that server or Raspberry Pi is an RTL SDR dongle uh, that's connected to an antenna. We also have a client computer which is running Ubuntu 22.04 and optionally it can also run GNU radio in the real-time protocol uh, interface out of tree module written by Franco Venturi. GRRTP. Also, it uses an Ethernet switch to connect the two computers. This is relatively simple hardware. It should be readily available and fairly inexpensive. It'll allow you to debug your system and will run two applications, one of which is a two meter FM multi channel application, and another is a wideband IQ streaming application which will stream the National Weather Service frequencies and will allow using GNU Radio to demodulate one of the National Weather Service stations. This is a block diagram of the setup we'll be using. On the left is the Raspberry Pi or Linux computer that's acting as the server. It can be headless. It doesn't need to have a monitor, keyboard, and mouse connected to it, but it may if you wish. It has plugged into a USB port an RTL SDR dongle, which is connected to an antenna. That computer talks through an Ethernet switch to the client device, which in this case is a Linux PC that has a display, keyboard, and mouse connected to it. In the setup, the computers will be using DHCP in order to uh, uh, get an IP address and also to provide routes between the two computers. You need to use gigabit ethernet cables. KA9Q radio uses multicast, and a lot of Wi-Fi devices don't handle multicast very well, with the result that the ethernet switch can become clogged. KA9Q package installs the Avahi uh, discovery service so that it can discover multicast service names, and you can use the service names rather than the IP addresses when you bring up the windows. The ethernet switch should have IGMP snooping enabled if you have that feature on the switch. The software sources KA9Q radio is available from github.com slash KA9Q slash KA9Q hyphen radio. And the GRRTP module for GNU radio is available from github.com slash F Venturi slash GR hyphen RTP. The initial steps are to install the latest Raspbian if you're using a Raspberry Pi or the latest Linux Ubuntu greater than version greater than or equal to version 2204 if you're using a Linux PC on the server. It's also recommended that you enable SSH server if operating the sender is headless. You can do that on a Raspberry Pi from the initial installation script, or if you've not done that, you can uh, use Raspi config on the server, but you'll need a monitor and keyboard to, to enable the SSH server. You'll need to get clone KA9Q radio from GitHub. You'll need to read through the documentation and install the dependencies, which are in the install markdown file. And then you'll need to do the build from that's also explained in the install markdown file under KA9Q documentation. On the client, you'll need to have Ubuntu 22.04 or more recent installed, or a Debian or other Linux equivalent to 22.04. You'll need to also clone KA9Q radio from GitHub on the client and install the dependencies and build. Optionally, you can install GNU Radio on the client 
and that will need to be Ubuntu 22.04 or later in order to get GNU Radio 3.10. And that's done easily with a sudo apt install GNU Radio. Again, that's just on the client, not on the server. Then you'll need to get clone grrtp uh, out of tree module from GitHub and then build using Franco's build instructions. You'll need to configure your ethernet switch to enable IGMP snooping. If you don't have that option, you'll need to disconnect all of the Wi-Fi and any slow, such as 100 megabit ethernet devices from the switch. KE9Q radio uses multicast to send packets from the server to any and all clients on the ethernet switch. Wi-Fi doesn't necessarily play very well with multicast. If IGMP snooping is turned off, the ethernet switch will flood all active ports with multicast traffic. And this can overwhelm Wi-Fi devices and it can kind of clog the switch. If you turn on IGMP snooping, the ethernet switch will listen to multicast group joins and leaves and it will only forward multicast traffic to the ports that are actually subscribed to the KA9Q multicast sender. So we'll start up a two meter FM application. We'll connect RTL SDR to a free USB port on the server. And then we'll run the server using the Radio D program on the server. And we'll invoke the Radio D command.comp. And we'll examine the output of that command window to verify that it's running properly. Then we'll launch the client program and we'll monitor the multicast group name and we can toggle verbose on and off. And we can use control C to exit on both the client and the server programs. So we'll bring up a terminal window and enlarge it a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And we will SSH, we're on the client now, into the server. So now we have an SSH, SSH window open on the server and we will change to the KA9Q directory and then we will bring up the Radio D program, the configuration file we're using for this test is Radio D at RTLSDR hyphen N5EG hyphen 2M dot comp. The configuration file that comes stock with KA9Q radio uh, uses a 15 kilohertz band plan. And in Oregon, we use a 20 kilohertz band plan. And so that file has been edited to use a 20 kilohertz band plan. So we'll, we can watch it start up. We can see that it's bringing up the RTL SDR and that it's brought up a total of 50 demodulators or 50 two meter FM demodulators. We can also see that it's using the uh, 2m.local as the control channel and FM dash PCM up here further up in the script dot local as the actual data channel. So those are the multicast service names. We'll now bring up a window on the client and enlarge it a little bit. And we'll bring up monitor. I'm sorry, we need to first uh, change to the KE9Q radio and then uh, directory. And then we'll bring up the monitor program and what we'll want to monitor is fmpcm.local. And here we can see it's brought up the monitor channel. We'll enlarge the window a little bit. We can hit V to turn on verbose. And right now, as this video has been recording, the two meter band is of course completely quiet, which always happens when one records a demo. We can also bring up another window and we'll enlarge the font on that window and we'll bring up the control channel 
and that control is 2m.local. Here we can see that we're getting audio on 147.160, and uh, that is an idle channel right now, so it's just bringing up a spurious carrier. In the control window, we don't normally need to tune this because the KA9Q software is actually invoked 50 different 2 meter FM channels, and the tuning on the RTL, SDR source is kind of in the middle of the two meter band. We don't need to bring up any particular uh, one. We can control, we can close out of the control program, close out of the monitor program, and then close out of the uh, server program on the source. Now we will bring up the Wideband IQ application. To do this, we just invoke a different Radio D config file over on the server. So in the terminal window, we will spell Radio D correctly, hopefully, and we will bring up RTLSDR192.conf. This brings up a 192 kilohertz uh, wide spectrum. And so if we bring it up, we'll see that it starts it. There's now one demodulator, but it's producing 192 kilohertz of IQ spectrum. And it's providing it on a uh, output called IQ-PCM.local. We'll now bring up GNU radio. This is the GNU radio flow graph. It's a little bit more complicated than you might expect and that's because we're going to do some frequency shifting in the flow graph. We have the RTP source, which was Franco Venturi's module. It's listening on the IP multicast address and the SSRC used by KE9Q radio. We have a probe and a message debug that will allow us to see if we're losing any packets in this transfer. We'll then multiply the output by a constant two and a half display it on a time sync and a frequency sync, and we'll multiply it against a complex signal source. And the complex signal source will allow us to tune the output of the spectrum within the GNU radio flow graph. The output of that will go through a low-pass filter with the 10 kilohertz cutoff. It has real taps, so the frequency response is minus 10 kilohertz to plus 10 kilohertz. We'll then run that into a narrow band FM demodulator, and that'll run into the audio sync. So we can now fire up this flow graph. Here you can see the center of the pass band that we're tuned to, which is not the strongest signal. 75 kilohertz below is a much stronger NWS signal. And we've shifted that up using the 75 kilohertz signal source in the flow graph. However, we're displaying the unshifted spectrum. So this larger signal is what is actually being demodulated. We'll now go ahead and terminate the GNU radio flow graph, and we'll terminate the server. The KA9Q software can be run as a daemon, but it can also be run from the command line as we just saw with SSH. Initially, it's probably best to start by running the radio D command from the command line. It provides useful diagnostic information it prints the multicast IP data and control addresses and the group names, and it will let you verify that you've actually started the radio hardware and started the modulators. So from a troubleshooting point of view, it's very useful to start it from the command line. After you have things working, you can then start it as a daemon on system boot by using the system control command. The KA9Q software is frequently updated by Phil Karn. 
There's an excellent web page uh, from the Northern Utah Web SDR that has a series of articles on KA9Q, but it's a little bit out of date. This is the URL to that uh, web page, and you can find various KE9Q articles on it. Recently, since the web page was published, KE9Q has had a series of updates. The software structure has changed, and the sender has now been simplified significantly. There's one script uh, that you use with the Radio D program, and it brings up not only the radio hardware, but all of the modes and demodulators. And so that slightly obsoletes the U Northern Utah Web SDR page. The KE9Q radio documentation uh, page remains current. The radio interface modules used to have separate demons, but now they're combined. And that's the end of this first presentation on verifying the setup.